G'day guys, welcome to another installment of Fix It Fingers over complicating stuff. Well, hopefully not this time, because on this project I'm actually going to use plans for the very first time. No, I didn't design them. They are from Steve Ramsey, Woodworking for the Immortal, free plans, make sure you go check him out. I'll put the link up in the top corner. It's time to make another Christmas present, this time for my one year old nephew, Zachariah. The kid has every toy imaginable, and I had no idea what to actually get him for his second Christmas, until I went over and visited my brother recently and saw the state that Zachariah leaves their living room in. There are toys everywhere, and honestly, he doesn't need another one. What he does need is somewhere to put them. Well, him, my brother. So I'm gonna make the toy box, which Steve designed for his charity event a couple of years ago. Sorry I'm a little bit late on that but it did look really fun and really simple. This video is certainly not brought to you by Craig, although it probably should be, because it was, well, inspirational for me to go out and purchase some of their products. Honestly, it shows you how well YouTube advertising works. It's reasonably affordable, it is designed for the beginner in mind, and I'm gonna be using the divisive pocket screw system for the first time. Look, I've been using a few of my Craig stuff uh, for a while now, and I love it, okay? It's not just a free plug for them because they're definitely not paying for this. It's a free plug for them because as a novice, it makes my life easy. So I've got my cross cut, I've got my rip cut, which I've already used a few times, my clamps, and the K4 Craig pocket hole system. I will give another quick shout out for free to Carbotech, which is where I pick up all of this. If you're in Australia, make sure you check out Carbotech because like, their customer service has been brilliant. Honestly, this just arrived uh, for Christmas, thanks mum, and the box was smashed. Nothing wrong with the screws, all the screws are there. I asked them if they had any spare boxes. They said, no, sorry, look, we don't have any of the spare boxes, they only come in the kit. So what did they do? This afternoon I'm going down to the post office to pick up an entire new screw kit for free. Three days after I complained that my box had smashed. So look, just their amazing customer service. I hope your stuff doesn't smash it. Check out Carbotech. All right, that's enough rambling to start this video off. I'm gonna try and keep it down in the number of parts. Let's get cracking on this toy box, which is primarily gonna be made from MDF and pine boards. So apart from utilizing pocket screws for the construction to make life easy, Steve also designed this with dimensional lumber. I've had to do a little bit of mathematics because it was just before the time he started providing his plans in metric and they're all in inches. However, effectively, I'm only using three different things. Nine mil MDF, he called for six, but I've decided to go a little bit tougher because I want the leftover nine mil for another project, to be honest. I've already ripped that down using the uh, rip cut in the car park of North Shore Timber and Hardware. Then I've got some 90mm and 42mm pine solid boards. And the first thing I'm going to do is build the frame, which will involve just cutting these down without a table saw to the correct lengths. Let's do that. First thing, I need four 29 inch or 734 millimeter sections. So this is my 90mm by 19mm board. I'm just going to be using the square cut to get those out. I can't really use a stock block. Obviously, miter saw or table saw better, but circus saw is going to have to do it. Bang on. Now I've got the first one cut. I can use it to do the next ones. Ew, didn't measure that one very well. I don't know if you can see that. I need to work on my accuracy and stop going so fast. I blame me, not the tools. What I was doing wrong was this. So I'm using the first board, which I cut and measure to make sure it is exactly, in this case, 15.5 inches. Sorry, metric rant here. Working in 15.5, 17 and 29 is actually a buttload easier than in working in millimeters. Sorry, metric system, but I really do feel, and it, it may be because I've been watching American shows, but in these sorts of dimensions, feet and inches do have a place. When you're working with very small things, or you're trying to do complex mathematics, metric system is obviously going to win. I'm a chemist, I studied advanced science, but I, I know all about that sort of debate. But for woodwork, 
I am finding thinking in metric is trickier in a lot of cases than thinking in imperial. Now I do sort of play Warhammer 40,000 as I think a not today shirt, but other shirts would entail. And that got me at an early age linked into the imperial system. I learned to guesstimate in inches very well. So don't be scared of using imperial. Uh, it was quite funny this actually, it's going in the opposite direction to the usual American rants where they say don't be scared of working in metric. In woodworking, I think there are definitely places for both systems. And when you're doing gross measurements, having the inch unit in your head actually does make your life a little bit easier than trying to conceptualize 732 millimeters. Now, of course, you could design your projects to be 750 millimeters, and that makes life a lot easier. But when you're working on someone else's plans in inches, just bloody run with it. That rant over, let's go back to cutting. As I was saying, the mistake I was making is after I've lined this up and marked it off, I was cutting on the wrong side of the line. The way to ensure an accurate cut is to always position your blade on the off-cut side. So in this case, this bit I don't want. So when I'm lining up my square cut jig, I put the line there on that side of it, and now the blade will run along here and not along here which was giving me the shorter distance. That wasn't meant to be that long of a rant. Here's a view with a square on there just to show you how much I'm out. It looks to be a variation of two to three millimeters, I think from the highest to the lowest. So with the circular saw and the square cut, it is tricky, though I was getting better at getting accurate cuts. I think it can be done, I just need to be a bit more bloody careful. Here are the four pieces that I would like to be the same length. And currently, because of my circular saw setup, there's a variation of three to four mil between them. Not pretty cool, but we can improve it. Now, I know these are actually pretty square because I used the square cut to cut them. So the important thing is to make sure they're all lined up. So just another little flat block, tap, tap, tap. Make sure they're all in together. One nice big strong clamp. Pull them in that way. Gentle pressure. Really make sure that they are all flush against that board. And in fact, the second clamp is even better. So I'll put another one here and then I'll trim that two to three mil off and that's how I've squared them up. That's a really nice hack if you are limited to a circular saw. There's the post cut. So you can see they are now dead flush just by taking off, seriously, millimeters. I think I'm gonna do that from now on. Pretty much whenever I need to cut multiple boards down to the same length, just cut them a few millimeters proud and then bring them in right at the last second with a cut like that if I can get them all done together. Perfect. There are all my bits of solid lumber cut with the square cut. Very cheap too, it's like 19, 20 bucks I think. So great investment if you don't have a table saw. This is all the off cut I had. So I've measured it pretty well. I'm actually happy that I didn't stuff anything up because I didn't really leave myself very much wiggle room. I've screwed my Craig jig onto a board so it's nice and stable. Let's start cranking it out and get some of these bits joined together. I'm not gonna show you how to set up the Craig K4 pocket hole jig because both Steve from Woodworking for Near Mortals and Drew on Fisher's Shop, another channel I'm really getting into, uh, have some excellent videos and I, I can't do better than that. So it's my first time using it. I'm not gonna pretend that I'm an expert on the Craig jig. So again, click the flag at the top here and it'll take you to someone who knows what they're talking about. Generally good advice for anything you see on this channel. I sound like I know what I'm doing, but remember, it is literally the first time that I have done most of the stuff. This is a vlog, not an educational resource. Important thing to know is that because I'm working with 19 mil lumber, three quarter inch, I've set everything up here on the settings and on the drill bit to be for 19 mil. Let's try this out. I'm really excited. I've had this for a little while, first time using it.
Holy crap, that was easy. Man, a four-year-old could do that. And I'm not actually making that up. If you go check out Drew Fisher at Fisher's shop, he has his four-year-old drilling pocket holes in the Craig video. That is just very, very clever. But you can actually build these things yourself. There are a few good uh, pocket hole jigs that you can make, but if you're gonna be doing any sort of joinery work and you're a novice and you don't have a lot of time and you don't wanna bugger around with difficult joints, then this may not be the prettiest solution, but damn, it is fun and easy. Oh, that was so cool. All right, let's see if we can join them together just as easily. Oops. Assembly time for the first part of the frame. Steve uses SketchUp to do these, and for most of his projects, you can download the plans for free off his website, and it's just so bloody helpful. He's such a nice guy. I can see why he's uh, being a really successful woodworking YouTuber for novices. I've clamped up using one of my Craig face clamps to a nice 90 degree angle there. Very important, if you're using an impact driver instead of a drill, make sure you turn off the impact setting. You don't want to blow these screws through too hard. So make sure that you've got the clutch on and the impact in, da, 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 tap off, or just use a regular drill. Craig really do tailor to the person who doesn't know what they're doing, and that's a good thing. Here I've got my screw kit, and I can see straight in the lid, I'm working with 19 mil lumber. I'd set up all of my pocket hole screw jig to 19 mil, so it tells me I need a 32 mil screw, and because I'm using pine, I need a coarse thread. They're probably the most common ones. Inch and a quarter screws with coarse thread is gonna be what I'm going through the most of. All right, let's start. Pull a few of these out. And trying to make sure that doesn't move while we're screwing it in. So that wasn't the tap, that was the clutch just engaging there. So that's worked pretty well, I think. Looks square. Maybe a tiny, tiny bit out, but allowable. I'll take that. And that's a pretty strong joint. You can glue them. You can also get some specialty clamps to make that process easier. I don't have them yet, but I am liking this system so much. I may invest in them in the future. Let's do some more. That was fun. Slowly, James, slowly. Never screw too fast. You won't have a happy ending. After that lovely shot of my arm, here at the bottom we need an inch and a half spacer, which conveniently, and I'm sure by Steve's design, is the width of the other pieces of board that I've cut. So I can use that like so, line this up, and then go again. These are square drive or Robertson head screws. Fortunately, the Craig kit comes with a dedicated driver for them. They are also self-tapping, so you can't really use regular screws. You also can't really use autofocus well on a phone camera. So the self-tapping screws are very, very important. I suppose you probably could get away with regular wood screws, but honestly, with how easy these make your life, they're worth the extra expense. There we go, that's the pretty side. Probably gonna have paint in this, I think, but we've got a frame. And for someone who's never done that before, I'm pretty damn happy. Here's the ugliness. So this is the main criticism of pocket screws, is you get these really ugly big holes in there, but I mean, that feels so strong, there's no glue on there, so I could take it apart again if I ever really wanted. And it was super easy, and if I wasn't filming this, it would have been relatively quick. In fact, I might put a stopwatch on, and I'll tell you exactly how long it takes me to put together the second one, having only built one of these before. Let's try that. And there's your answer. Pretty much five minutes on the dot. But I wasn't rushing, I was literally just pottering around, taking my time as I would off camera any other time. And I've got those two frames knocked up in effectively 10 minutes. Fantastic, loving that Craig system. Now for the harder ones. Craig do make a right angle clamp, which would make this job very, very easy. However, I'm not as stupid as I look sometimes because I purposely did the long ones first, so that way on these shorter side pieces, I can actually just use my usual Irwin clamps, 
to hold them in place carefully. Now we should better drive in. Ready for the last side. Make sure the pocket screws go on the inside of the frame. Bit easy to clamp it up this time. Grab my spacer again to make sure this gap is correct. And the other side will be done. There we go, my first box and my first pocket screw frame. Pretty happy with it. Feels strong. All right, next step is to get the runners in that we're gonna to stick to the MDF to. Here's the next phase. You can see the slightly darker ones are the bits that are now gonna be attached to the frame except for the lid. I don't wanna screw them because it'll look ugly. I don't have a brad nailer and I don't have the patience to nail these all in. So I'm just gonna glue them and clamp them overnight. That should give it enough support. This is where it probably would have paid to have a clamping strategy. Let's see how this first stage the glue up went. Beautiful. So these bases not only offer support, but they're going to be book holders. So this bit here and this bit here are actually going to be inset just a little bit to hold some uh, reading material as he gets to that age. Nice. All right, let's try and get the rest of these glued in today and then make some noise cutting the MDF bits. Before I do that though, I think I'm going to go off the plan for the first time. And these edges are really sharp. Now, Steve's build was designed as an easy, really, really beginner's project. And while I am still a beginner, I am going to tart this up just a little bit by rounding over some of these edges, I think, just to make it a little bit gentler on young hands. 